Hi everyone, Sandman here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from Nullternative, and here's what he has to say. Hey Sandman, first some background about myself. I'm a divorced man, no kids thank God, and a white male in his early 30s, and I moved to New York City from South Africa just under a decade ago. And this city is absolutely crawling with some of the worst female prospects that I've ever come across. Yes, they can be beautifully painted up, but they're mostly just despicable people. Every now and again, though, there's a rose among the thorns, but they're never actually from this city. My questions and comments to you are these. I'd like you to share your thoughts about what I'm struggling with, because I'm regularly discovering more and more men my age that seem to be struggling with the same issues. And throughout my life, I've been somebody who's been struggling to keep his emotions in check. I have a quick temper and have an enormous attention deficit. The former probably being replaced with bitterness is waning as I age, but the latter is worsening dramatically. Close friends have been telling me to try Ritalin or Adderall, and the like. Right now I smoke, if you know what I mean, to forget about the stress of the current day, as well as the anxiety of the economic and political unknowns of tomorrow. I guess you're not a doctor, but I'd like to get your advice on the opinion of men moving in the direction of these types of drugs, either recreational or prescription. But how do I cope with the anger? Any thoughts would be greatly appreciated. So thanks for your videos, man. Well, an alternative, thanks for your comments and questions. And first of all, you have to figure out where the anger is coming from. There's an excellent talk by Stefan Molyneux where he talks about how a mother's mental state influences the development of a child. And I'm putting a link to that video in the description below, so you can watch it and get an idea about the biological deck of cards stacked up against us at birth. Also figure out if your mother was in a mental state of duress during her pregnancy with you. That would be the first step to figuring out if your anger is a biological trait based on the development of your brain as a fetus, or if there's a more serious issue at play. That would be a great starting point. If your mother was stressed during her pregnancy with you, then all of those stress hormones might have actually been released and affected your mind while it was developing inside her body, and thus filling you with anger and hostility in anticipation of a world filled with scarcity and war, instead of tranquility and peace. My mother had a good pregnancy with me, and she had a terrible pregnancy with my brother. An alternative, I believe that my brother seems to have the same condition that you do. I came to this world as peaceful and loving, and my brother came out as angry and vindictful. He is also five years younger, so I observed his temperament as a baby. And he was angry all of the time, even when he came out of the womb. Especially when he didn't get things his way. And even when he was spanked, he often seemed to enjoy the pain. And he was angry and causing problems for myself as well as my parents. Evolutionary biology is so powerful that our mother's mood has the power to either turn us into a man with anger issues, or a calm and peaceful man that prefers peace and tranquility. Everyone out there should figure out the state of their mother while they were still in her womb. Sometimes a mother goes through both periods of stress and periods of peace while she's pregnant, and that, in my opinion, would create a child that's the most balanced. A person that knows how to get angry and stand up for themselves, while also being able to keep the peace. So watch the video if you want, and it might give you some more insights. And if that doesn't solve your problem alternative, then I would look into figuring out what the triggers are for your anger and dealing with your fears directly and working through your emotional pain. Perhaps go to group therapy or one-on-one -on -one talk therapy with a counselor. Cognitive therapy works as well. I know I'm not a doctor, but it certainly helped me greatly in my own life to notice and understand the triggers that are found all around me. Sometimes we can't help but respond a certain way to outside stimulation or behaviors from others. But that doesn't mean we can't understand why it happens. Once you find out your triggers, you'll probably still get angry, but your rational mind will be in a better position to calm you down and get you to see things from a different perspective. I believe that more and more men your age are dealing with these types of anger issues is because their mothers were stressed during pregnancy, or these men didn't have the proper male mentors while growing up. As men, even before we're born, a woman, our mother, and her mood influences the type of person that we'll be when we come out of her. So if women today are unhappier than they've been in the past, then you can certainly bet that that will shape the brains of fetuses to be prepared for a world of scarcity and competition, instead of one of abundance and cooperation. Our genes prepare us for a world that they think will enter based on our mother's emotions. It's a way of passing on emotional intelligence to the development of that fetus. People that are born to angry and upset mothers also have smaller brains. And the parts of the brain associated with empathy and mirror neurons are not as fully developed. So if you want to understand why children today are having behavioral problems quite a bit, then it could be tied to the emotional states of mothers during pregnancy. A mass population of women stressed during pregnancy creates a society of men and women that have anger management issues. 
And then those same stressed children go off and have the kids of their own. And the cycle continues. So it becomes a chain reaction. Hopefully I've explained enough about the science behind all of this, and now I want to talk about the specific types of actions that you can take to alleviate your anger and diffuse it. I would suggest medication as a last alternative, because it could also cause side effects and damage your internal organs. I've also found that medication fixes one problem, but often causes two or three new ones. And then those problems require medication as well. And then you eventually end up in a nursing home someday, taking 20 or 30 pills a day, and you're no longer yourself. When my brother gets angry, he leaves the situation that's making him mad. He gets in his vehicle and drives away before causing a scene. And he also requires a lot of attention from people and gets it by buying expensive cars, boats, and houses. For him, materialism gets him the attention that he craves. As for men that are the opposite and crave peace, I think such men would rather know they have access to lots of money and resources if they need them to keep themselves happy and keep themselves satisfied. But men like me that had mothers that were basically calm during their pregnancy don't seek out as much attention as the others. Instead, we crave safety. And our obsession with safety often leads us to go to extreme lengths to get it. We accumulate money in the bank and then we don't spend it. We hoard things that we don't need. And to think all of this might actually be happening because our mothers were too happy during their pregnancy with us. So we crave those good positive feelings and hormones in an unhealthy abundance as adults. My brother is finally getting therapy and now he's in his early 30s. But men that are angry and have anger management issues often don't have stable relationships or marriages. Which could also mean that there are more angry men out there than ever going MGTOW. And the so-called rise of the angry misogynistic MGTOW, described by Aaron Clary and other Manosphereans, probably has to do with a kernel of truth that others might have observed through angry millennial men that have taken the red pill and are now upset but also appear to never get over their anger. Perhaps some people have anger issues and aren't just angry at women, but they're also angry at society, their parents, former relationship partners, and the fact that they're wage slaves in our civilization. There seem to be a lot more angry people out there than those filled with peace and quiet. And most people are perpetually angry about something bad in their lives, so that's why I believe they often watch negative news shows. Because they want to subconsciously see other people suffer more than they do. The whole attraction behind the news phenomenon of car wrecks and murders on the 6 o'clock news seems to have been started in the 70s and 80s, when women entered the workforce, and that could just represent the rise in anger in our society. And the rise of anger in our society has probably also made psychiatrists and psychologists rich. Because when you have an angry personality, you constantly need to purge or deal with your negativity. But it becomes almost impossible for you to get rid of it completely. My best advice to people out there that have anger issues is to avoid the triggers as much as possible. But also give yourself healthy outlets for your anger. Some types of anger are fine, so long as you recognize them and respond to them in the situation instead of letting your anger own you. Take ownership over your anger, and use it to motivate you instead. The people that I know that have successfully dealt with their anger problems have funneled their anger into creative endeavors in order to get revenge on the others that they see as putting them down. I know that's not always healthy for people mentally, but it sure beats getting drunk and going out and picking fights with people, or becoming a violent criminal and then getting thrown in jail or prison. With regards to the issue of a mother's biological state influencing the fetus in a womb, I have this to say. I think that there are three possible outcomes when a mother is pregnant with a person. The first one is an angry person because the mother was upset. The second one is a person that's far too needy and far too peaceful, and thus ends up becoming a needy hoarder, or something worse. And the third type of person is somebody that's well-balanced and can basically deal with society, and can deal with both the negatives and the positives. And we all know that most women are not as emotionally stable as men, but now we see that perfectly stable and happy women can create a mind of a child that has a hard time dealing with hostile things in the world and possibly becomes an introverted hoarder. But a woman that's out of control emotionally could lead to a child that is an angry and unstable criminal. So a woman that's somewhere in between that spectrum can create the most well-balanced person. An alternative, you can't choose your temperament, but you can recognize it and find ways to cope with it. But please don't take any medication unless you've actually been diagnosed with a condition first. And before you try the medication, at least try herbal or natural remedies first and change your diet and exercise and possibly the environment that you live in to see if that corrects anything first. We can do many things to deal with the cards that our biology has dealt to us, but we can't always change them. And we can't change what we've been given, either good or bad. Anyways, hopefully that helped you in Alternative, and thank you for your kind donation. As for everyone else, like me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. 
And remember, a red pill a day keeps the divorce lawyers away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.